I don't know about you, but one of my least favorite things to do with my time is to sit at a dealership waiting for them to diagnose my truck, come up with an estimate, and then try to upsell me on things that I don't honestly need, all while losing hours of my day in the process. What makes it worse is that there's usually 20 other poor souls in there just like yourself, and the lone television is usually playing the worst daytime TV show on the planet. After a day at the dealership, this is what I look like. So I prefer to diagnose, repair, and maintain what I can by myself and avoid the dealership. Now for most of us shade tree mechanics, the time that you need the dealer the most is when you get the ubiquitous check engine light. The message on your dash says, see dealer with no other information. So when you get a check engine light that you need to diagnose, you basically have three different options. Number one, schedule yourself in at the dealer sometime over the next few weeks as they can fit you in. Number two, go to AutoZone or Pep Boys or one of the other large chain parts suppliers and have them pull the code and let you know what it is. This sounds like a great option until you actually do it the first time. In my case, the surly counter clerk was already pissed off about something else, and my request to run a diagnostic on my truck just about sent her over the edge. You might have a different experience than mine, but it's going to be the luck of the draw. Or, number three, read the code yourself and do your own diagnosis. If we're going to pick option number three, if we're going to try to do this ourselves, we're gonna need some form of OBD2 diagnostic device. What is OBD2? Well, it stands for Onboard Diagnostics and OBD2 is the second version of this standard. You can see the cars have had this since around 1996 in the US and 98 in Canada. A standard connector is used on every auto. They're exactly the same. There's a certain standard to this. And on the F-150, the OBD2 connector is located above my left knee on the driver's side. You can see this device right there. So that's what it looks like right above your knee. Now there's different types of OBD2 diagnostic tools as you might imagine. First of all, there is a dedicated plug-in type of diagnostic scanner that you can get. The general purpose for this device is for error code diagnostics and performance monitoring. It's really not meant for monitoring your engine while you're on the road, right? So the price can range from anywhere from a hundred bucks all the way up to what I found was $6,500, maybe even higher for a professional snap-on system. Or what you can do is you can go with a different route here. You can start off with a Bluetooth scanner, which you plug into the OBD2 port and use that in conjunction with a smartphone app. So it's gonna use Wi-Fi or Bluetooth to send data to your smartphone. The smartphone app will analyze the selected PIDs. It can be used for in-service monitoring as well as you can use this for four scan modifications. So I've got a separate video on this in my library. On four scan 101, this is where you're actually changing the options in the truck software. So the app, and the OBD2 scanner can also pull error codes and analyze and or clear them as well too. Now the price for something like this is gonna run anywhere from 10 bucks for really cheap OBD2 scanners to close to $200 for some of the better ones. And usually the smartphone apps are relatively inexpensive. So in this video, I'm gonna compare the OBD Link MX Plus OBD2 Bluetooth dongle, which I found to be the best for Fords. And I'm gonna be using that in conjunction with the OBD Link Android app. And I'm gonna compare that versus a device that I picked up on Amazon, which is just a standard diagnosis appliance tool, which plugs into the OBD2 port. And it's called the Launch C Reader tool. So this video is gonna be comparing either of these two, which one should you get? What are the benefits and the drawbacks to each of these configurations? My only requirement for this review is that I didn't want to have to read an instruction manual to use these devices. Our first comparison challenge between these two diagnostic scanners is to introduce a problem with the truck and see how well the respective scanners detect and clear the issue. 
Now, surely, if you've owned an F-150 Power Boost, you've dreamed of getting rid of this stupid pedestrian alert sound. And probably the first thing that most people do when they try to eliminate the sound is to unplug the backup alarm speaker located right under the front bumper. Well, the truck is too smart for us to take this simple path. In my case, it did not cause a check engine light to go off, but it will throw off an error code that you have to manually clear on the dash so it's not a permanent mod. There are two different ways to eliminate the pedestrian sounder, which is beyond the scope of today's video, but I will predict that a helpful soul will post them in the comment section below. I unplugged the pedestrian sounder, so let's try to diagnose and clear this fault first with the Launch C Reader. I just plugged the unit into the OBD2 port in my truck and added a wireless connection to my home Wi-Fi access point. If you don't have a Wi-Fi signal available, use your phone in hotspot mode to get a connection. So let's see how this launch reader handles this. Now I apologize for getting my fingers on your screen, but there's no other way to capture this. So we're gonna use the auto detect. It's going to scan the VIN and then talk to the systems through the Wi-Fi. And then I'm verifying that it did indeed find my truck. So what it's doing right now is it's pulling all of any possible DTCs through the PIDs on all the modules, all the software modules in the truck. And we are actually finding some fault codes here. Not exactly the ones that we would expect. Power steering module comes up as a fault code because of the pedestrian sounder speaker. So we're going through and pulling everything and pulling every system, every module, looking for any other DTCs, diagnostic trouble codes, and I think just about now is when we finish up. Okay, so here's my basic diagnostic report. You can see that I've got faults on three different modules. So for each of these, I'm gonna I'm gonna read the, the code in here and see what it is. And in this case, the speaker. There's a there's a DTC for the speaker. Well, no kidding, we unplugged it. So I'm gonna clear this DTC. So we're gonna clear the fault and say yes, we want to clear that fault. Although the next time I start the truck, it's gonna come right back up again, right? So we didn't fix the problem. We're just clearing the code on here. So we're gonna go back to the power steering module. We're going to clear the code on this one as well too. We're not gonna read this. We're just gonna clear this memory fault out of the truck, clearing the code so it doesn't come up anymore. And then I'm not sure why I have a trailer fault on this. So we're gonna clear this memory fault as well. So we're gonna get everything cleared. And we should be all green as we go all the way down the list. Everything is good. So this device is very, very good for determining what you've got. You can also run a basic diagnostic report and then have it emailed directly to you, which is handy. So here is what the report looks like. I can't scroll all the way down through this, but it's pretty comprehensive. All right, let's summarize the Launch C Reader Elite Appliance. It was easy to set up and connect to the vehicle. I really just plugged it into the OBD2 interface and it powered the unit through the interface. Didn't really have to do anything other than set up that initial auto detect module. It did require an external internet connection via Wi-Fi. This was somewhat cumbersome to deal with because you had to set up the Wi-Fi connection. And in my case, it was difficult to set it up through the home, so I had to use the hotspot on my phone. But this does assure that PIDs are up to date for this particular vehicle. It was a relatively intuitive interface to pull diagnostics and clear codes. It was easy to use. A deeper feature set that I did not investigate. So there's more features to this device, but really all I cared about is using this to decode DTCs and reset them if possible. No additional service fees or subscriptions to use this device. Not every device is like that. Some of these you have to pay a monthly service fee to decode the DTCs and to ensure that all the data and the PIDs are up to date. So there was no additional fees for this device, which I thought was very important. Now it's time to look at a completely different type of tool to the launch product, 
which is the OBD Link MX Plus working with the OBD Link smartphone app. It works the same way as other OBD2 dongles. The OBD Link MX Plus plugs right into the OBD2 port on your truck and it connects via Bluetooth to your smartphone app. Like any other Bluetooth device, you're gonna pair it to your smartphone and then you can connect to the dongle. Let's see how this combination works to decode and clear our disconnected pedestrian speaker DTCs. Once I bring up the app on my smartphone, the first thing I wanna do is hit connect. And so it has to establish communication between the smartphone and the OBD Link MX Plus dongle. Then we select the diagnostics tool and let it communicate with all of the different modules and use the PIDs to read any potential diagnostic trouble codes or DTCs. And it looks like it found three trouble codes, which sounds familiar, which is what exactly what the launch product found as well too. So we'll take a look at those once this finishes reading in. So the first trouble code is the speaker under the body control module. The second is battery voltage under the power steering. And then the third is lost communications with body control module, which was our trailer module fault. Now we just need to back out and clear the codes. So there's a prompt down here to clear the codes. Boom, there we go, no more codes. Now, if we go to dashboards on the OBD Link app, there's one more tool that I think you'll find interesting. This dashboard tool on the OBD Link app allows you to create a custom engine monitor for your truck. The custom dashboard that I'm showing in this video is designed and coded by a very talented individual on the F150gen14.com forum. Pay attention to how it allows me to know exactly what's going on with this extremely complex hybrid drivetrain. This is the OBD Link app on the right-hand side of this screen here. And this represents the app that I would normally have in my line of sight when I'm driving so I can keep tabs on what's happening with the engine. So I'm gonna walk you through for the next uh, couple of minutes here exactly what all these dials mean on the app. And then there's a couple of applications that I want you to pay attention to. So the high voltage battery is on the lower right hand side here. So there's the battery voltage. Here's the, basically the state of charge from, goes from about 35% up to 70%. That's normally the range it's gonna stay within. And then particularly important is the actual amperage coming either into or out of the high voltage battery, which is right there. So you'll see this as I come up a hill in a minute here. So I'll point that out. You can see the vehicle speed, the gear. Here's uh, the spark retard or timing. Here's the RPM when the internal combustion engine is running. Now I'm going up a hill. Notice that the amperage is positive. And then as I slow down and start coming down the hill, the amperage is negative. This is representing charging as I come down to the light. Notice also that the internal combustion engine has turned off, it's RPM zero, and I'm charging the battery as much as I can now as I wait for the light. This four amp draw on the high voltage battery is running the air conditioner right now. Okay, driving again, and again, we're gonna get into an interesting situation here. On the lower left hand is the low voltage battery. So the 12 volt battery system is these two gauges over here on the left hand side and then uh, up at the very top is boost gauge some of these other ones i'm not sure what they are now what i want you to pay particular attention to right now is that the gasoline engine is shut off i'm driving on the battery only so what you're watching is i, st I still have a pretty good state of charge i'm still at 52 percent right now i'm still kind of crawling forward i'm going at about 25 miles an hour and I'm drawing anywhere from 30 to 50 amps or so, depending on whether I'm coasting or accelerating. So this is still on the battery. I'm still on the battery, 50 amps. I still have about 52% charge. And it's surprising if you're, if you're light on the pedal, how far you can go on the battery alone if you have the right conditions. And you'll see the 
the gas engine kick in here in just a second as I turn around the corner and then start accelerating up the hill. At some point, we're going to start to, to see the draw on this thing. The draw on the battery is going to require the engine to kick on. So here comes the draw. Here comes a bunch of amperage dumping out of the battery. And then, boom, the engine kicks on again as we start to accelerate up the hill and then into normal driving. I mean, this is typically what you're going to see with a power boost. Let's summarize the OBD Link MX Plus. It's also just as easy to set up and connect to the vehicle. It does require a smartphone and that smartphone, the assumption there is that the smartphone is going to be connected to the internet. And this is necessary to keep the PIDs updated as they will change with time. It is just as easy to pull diagnostics and clear codes. It also offers real-time PID monitoring with graphical user interface via the smartphone. Hopefully you found that example kind of interesting. The OBD Link MX Plus dongle can also act as an interface for Forescan programming of the truck's software options. I've got a whole separate video called Forescan 101 that shows how I did this. No additional service fees or subscriptions to use this device for basic DTC research resets, nor for real-time PID monitoring. This is very important. So the big question here, which one should you buy? If you just want to have a tool handy while you're on the road, you need to decode a check engine light or reset a DTC, the Launch C Reader Elite unit was very simple to operate and was a standalone solution. You could just shove it into your glove box, pull it out if you have a check engine light, and presto, you're all set literally minutes later. If you need more options out of an OBD2 interface, such as real-time monitoring and Forescan programming, the OBD Link MX Plus is the best possible solution on the market for the more advanced user. I believe this product has way better PIDs that are available. I've evaluated cheaper dongles with decent software like the Torque apps, and those worked okay, but nowhere near the amount of information that you could pull out of the OBD Link MX Plus. The PID library is much more significantly expanded for the Ford product. So I've also included Amazon link for both products in the video description if you're looking for a source to pick one of these up. As always, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.